Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. So a few weeks ago, I had to get a tetanus shot because I was trying to harvest some green beans and accidentally harvested part of my abdomen. It was an easy trip to the doctor, but while I was there, I kept thinking about all the systems that had to be in place for me to get that tetanus shot. Like there had to be a system of roads and highways and bridges for me to get to the clinic, and a system of gasoline distribution to fuel my car. An electricity system was necessary to keep the lights on and refrigerate my tetanus vaccine. A sewage treatment system allows for sanitary hand washing. Then there's the system that trains and licenses healthcare workers, and a system that manufactures and distributes the astonishing number of goods associated with my tetanus vaccine. I don't just mean the needle and the syringe and the vaccine itself, but also a cotton ball and a band-aid and an alcohol wipe and gloves for the healthcare worker. In the dreary grind of daily life, most of us do not talk or think much about systems because, you know, they're boring. Like, medical breakthroughs are fascinating. Improving supply chains so that medical breakthroughs that need to be refrigerated can stay refrigerated? Not as fascinating. Still, I would argue that healthy systems are kind of the key to healthy and productive human lives. They are so central and so interdependent that improving them can lead to this massive virtuous cycle. You can look at almost any country and see this, but let's consider, say, Thailand. Between 1994 and 2014, Thailand's child mortality rate decreased by more than 55%. So what got better? Everything. Everything got better. Transportation systems got better, healthcare delivery systems got better, water treatment systems got better, agricultural efficiency got better, because better health means more people working, which means a bigger economy, which means more tax revenue to invest in things like still better health, and also, say, better roads. Better roads make healthcare and food delivery and everything else cheaper and faster. Better agricultural yields and food delivery systems means better health, which means more people working, which grows the economy, and so on. So, okay, let's just improve all the systems, but yeah, of course, it's not that easy. Like, let's look at Sierra Leone, for instance. About 11% of Sierra Leone's total economy goes to spending on healthcare, which is similar percentage-wise to, like, the UK, Australia, or France. But because Sierra Leone is a much poorer country, 11% of their GDP is equal to $54 per person per year for healthcare. I paid $75 just for that tetanus shot, which admittedly is extortion, but still, $54 per person per year is not enough to fund a robust healthcare healthcare system. And just as healthy systems can create virtuous cycles, weak systems can create vicious ones. If a country has very little tax revenue to build systems and lacks the political and economic stability necessary to attract private enterprise, systems can weaken, which means less political and economic stability. Like, imagine you're in the same situation I was in, needing a tetanus shot, but in a community with much weaker systems. You may have to travel on bad roads because the transportation system isn't strong, the clinic might be understaffed because the health worker trained and employment system isn't strong. And even if the clinic is adequately staffed and supplied, your tetanus shot might be ineffective because it wasn't adequately refrigerated because there wasn't electricity. Investments that take a really narrow view of healthcare, like healthcare is only tetanus shots, may not end up improving that situation much. And that's one of the reasons I admire Partners in Health so much, which Nerdfighteria has been working with for a decade now. Partners in Health is systems-focused. They do not, like, drop in with solutions. They listen to and invest in communities. And while learning about global health over the last several years, I've seen again and again that these fragile systems can get better, and that a focus on health, in the largest sense of the word, can improve every aspect of a community's life. Of course, investing in fragile systems sometimes fails, and the progress is often not simple or linear, but it is real. So let's stay excited about the breakthroughs and innovations that will improve human life, but let us not forget the humble systems that literally keep the lights on. Hank. I'll see you on Friday.